Blender 3.4 is only three days away on December 7th, and I'm going to try something new and cover what's new. Let's go! Drivers now have a new mute toggle, but it's available in both the edit driver pop-up and driver editor. This works the same as the mute in driver's channel, but is just easier to access. Fonts now have access to way more symbols that should make it easier when missing a symbol that you're wanting. And when editing text, the cursor is now blue. Metaball objects have now been improved and are now evaluated as meshes. This should help when rendering, as the render engine only needs to process the mesh object and can skip the metaball object. This rendering is now supported on Linux. Okay, so Grease Pencil. In Grease Pencil, you can now import multiple SVGs, and the .svg is included in the name. Fill tools have now been improved in Grease Pencil, the advanced panel has been rearranged, the fill tool when using extend lines are now clipped when colliding unless unchecked. There's now the ability to check if you want it to actually collide with the normal strokes, which will make the collide blue. The blue extension will now be used to f limit the fill area. The S key is now the hotkey to toggle the extend method, normally extend radius, then extend. The D key is now used to toggle the stroke collision check. There's now an outline modifier. There's also a new option in line art that forces objects to produce intersections. There's a new mode in time offset modifier called chain. This allows you to chain together four different time ranges with four different modes. Okay, so moving to the modeling section. The subdivision modifier has been improved and should be faster when subdividing many loose edges. The relax brush in the UV editor now has a new relax method which is geometry. This will use the geometry's cotangent, making the UVs better follow the 3D geometry. By the way, there was also improvements to other UV tools in order to make this work. There's now some new guides in overlays, these being fixed and pixel options. There's a new operator called UV Alignment that tries to rotate the UV map and islands correctly. It has three different modes, Edge, Geometry, and Auto. There is another new operator that is called Randomize Islands. It pretty much does exactly that by randomizing the selected UV's rotation, scale, and offset. Though, only when you actually have a value entered in it. And then you can change the seed if you want a different randomized result. The UV editor has also had some more minor changes that relate to renaming or optimizing the UVs. Geometry nodes. The view node has been greatly enhanced by now previewing geometry statistics in the spreadsheet and displaying geometry and attributes in the viewport. It is also activated by clicking on it and now has a drop down menu allowing you to choose what field is being acted on. There's a new node called self object that outputs the object that contains geometry nodes and uses the modifier that is currently being used. The transfer attribute node has now been removed, yeah. But at least now it's three unique nodes. These nodes being sample index, which retrieves data from specific geometry, sample nearest, which retrieves the vertices from the closest geometry element, and sample nearest surface node that interpolates the field input and closest location on the mesh surface. The face set boundaries node was introduced that finds the edges between different patches of faces. Mesh topology has been improved with the introduction of a couple new nodes including corners of faces, corners of vertex, edges of corner, edges of vertex, face of corner, offset corner, and vertex corner. Is it just me or does anyone else think this should just be combined into one node? Anyways, there's a new sample UV surface node that allows you to get an attribute value. With curves, there's of course some new nodes, and these aim to give more information about mapping and points. These nodes include curve of point, points of curve, and offset point in curve. Along with these curve nodes, there's also a set and curve normal, and the sample curve node has been updated to have inputs for curve index and custom value to sample. Performance when using nodes has now been increased, and there's some node editor tweaks. Next up, Blender's Python API and text editor has had some improvements. Cycle has also had some pretty big updates with the support of path guiding. It apparently improves sample quality of individual paths, which ends up reducing noise in complex lighting scenarios. Like, just look at these renders. Pretty huge. 
Moving on to Sculpt, Paint, and Textures, there's a new pop-up for masking when sculpting, showing all the masking tools. Under Brush, all of the masking tools have been added as well. You can now automatically apply mask in cavities by simply clicking a button. You can also invert this as well. There's also a new occlusion toggle that will create a more accurate projection painting, but costing more in performance. While that's most of the changes in Blender 3.4, there's of course other more minor features, but if you want to read the release notes so that you can see all of them, I'll have a link in the description. Anyways, let me know what you thought about Blender 3.4, and do you think I should do more videos covering Blender updates? Aside from that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.